Hey, it's Mr. K doing a video for AP Physics 1, and we are looking at... Well, let me play it a little bit. Uh, we are looking at a energy bar chart <clears throat> today, or what we're going to do with energy bar charts. And I think the best scenario to look at is going to be, well, this skateboarding thing here. So, uh -oh. <laughs> check it out. You got some famous skaters, all old guys now, but back when I was younger, they were all young too. Um... Tony Hawk built this this loop the loop in the back in, in his backyard, and I don't know where this is. This might be his backyard. I don't, I don't think it is. I think they just moved it. But um, <clears throat> all these skaters are trying to do the, uh, the 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 loop the loop. I think Tony Hawk was the first one to do it, and then uh, he, he he has since built a vertical loop or a um, kind of a corkscrew kind of looking loop that you go down. But <clears throat> you can talk about the potential energy and kinetic energies here. Um, a lot of pads, because you're probably going to screw up the first time you go through it. It is not simple. Um, in fact, I think one guy really gets hurt here. Not that guy. It was like a young kid. Um, ooh. Yes. Ooh. Call the green line. Anyway. <clears throat> I think this is a good this little kid here. Ooh. Nope, nope, it was this kid. <laughs> Not this kid. Okay, he's, that's an old guy. Oh, I'm getting it wrong. Where's the kid that, like, totally slammed? Ooh, I had to hurt. This is a, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, missed a pad all the way on the ground. Paramedics called. Sorry. Oh, man. But what we have here is we have, uh, <laughs> we've got gravitational potential energy turning into kinetic energy, and then back into gravitational at the top of the loop, and then back again at the bottom uh, in, the, in the all kinetic. And the trouble that these guys are having is that when they go through this loop, the forces are, uh, they're, ch they're changing. So when you're just on flat ground, you know, you just have normal force and force of gravity. Um, but they're having such a hard time going through the loop because uh, as you go upside down, of course, normal force starts to point down and gravity points down too. So you have this huge change in what you feel in your feet. And so let's go back to right around here. Huh? That was pretty good. Um, let me go back to, and this is for my reference, about 220. And so if we go back to 220 and you go around, then what you should notice is that as you go up and around, you do change from gravitation or from kinetic energy to gravitational potential and back again. And we can do an energy bar chart. One of the uh, ways to visualize this. So I think this is cool. Um, I, I couldn't do it because I, I was never a skater like that. I was a rollerblader. Uh, but anyway, let me, let me pause this video and then we will take a look at energy bar charts. All right, so we went through and we looked at the video with the skaters going through the loop the loop, and um, we can totally do an energy bar chart with that. What that is is we're just going to pick a certain moment in time and talk about the energies that are involved. And then the bar chart is going to just show us visually what the, what the energies are. So it's a pretty simple process. Um, set up your energy bar chart. Here we're going to talk about uh, the energy amount. That's the height of it. Um, here down here is going to be the types. And of course we would pick a certain situation. So if we said that uh, we have this initial hill, we came around, we go around like this. Um, if we pick a certain point, let's say like right here, let's call this point one, um, and then let's call this point two up at the top of this loop the loop. Uh, what we would say at point one was that you know all of our energy from the beginning was you know it was potential energy due to gravity. Down at the bottom we would say that it's kinetic energy down here. Up here we would say that it's both potential energy due to gravity and kinetic energy. Now there's one more thing that we need to think about because this is this is a real life scenario that we were looking at. Um, we lose energy due to friction. You know, friction, a um, bit of sound is created, so we're losing energy constantly as these guys are going through this loop-the-loop, -loop. and so that that's kind of a problem. 
But we can show that by saying, hey, down here at the bottom, not only do we have kinetic energy, but we also have some kind of energy loss. And this is energy loss due to friction, due to heat, due to sound, due to deformation, whatever else. Um, over here, we're also going to have some energy loss. And presumably, it would be a bit more because as we have this skater going through this loop the loop, we're going to lose more and more energy. Now, at the very end, we're going to have this kinetic energy again. But you better bet the kinetic energy hit the very end, let's call it point 0.3, is less than the kinetic energy at point 0.1 because we're constantly losing energy. And the energy at point 0.3 would be the kinetic energy and this energy loss kind of scenario here. So if we were to do an energy bar chart for the uh, point 0.1, what I would say is that, all right, at point 0.1, we would have, let's say that we had a maximum of... 10 centimeters for our total energy here. But at point one, let's say we went through, and by the bottom of this hill, we only got about nine centimeters worth for our kinetic energy value. Okay, and the question would be, well, you know, conservation of energy says the energy needs to go somewhere, right? And so we would also include just a little bit next to it of this uh, energy loss. And that would be the energy bar chart for, for point 0.1. And so if you want to do this mathematically, you could say, all right, the, uh, the potential energy in the beginning, this whole mg delta h, however high this is, um, is going to be equal to the kinetic energy here, which is going to be 1 half mv squared plus some amount of energy loss that we could write in as work done by friction or whatever else, but we don't know what the force of friction is with these uh, with these wheels. We can probably figure it out if we knew the, um, the velocity at the bottom. We can find the average force that would cause this energy loss, but we don't know that, so we're just going to write it in as energy loss. So we would just say hey, the uh, potential energy beginning is equal to the energy over here. We have conserved the energy. Um, and it, you know, th this energy that we don't get is just going to be this energy loss. Um, this is for point one. If we were to say for point two, let me just do it right next to it. For point two, remember that we have this maximum amount of energy. I'm just going to use this as my axis. And uh, that was about 10 centimeters with my ruler. At point two, we have a mixture. Um, at point two, we are a little bit lower than our maximum height. And so we're going to say that we... Um, did I draw this about the same height? No, it's a little bit lower. So let's say that we are a little bit lower than our maximum height. We've continuously lost energy. And if we've continuously lost energy, I'm going to do, do that first. Let's just say that we lost a little bit more energy here. Energy loss. I'm, I'm going to treat that as 2 centimeters on my, on my graph. And at the very top of this thing, we're probably still moving. But if I had 10 centimeters worth of energy to start with, and I've already used up 2 centimeters worth because of energy loss. That means I only have 8 centimeters worth to work with now. Um, so let's say that we have about, let's say, 6 centimeters worth of, uh, boom, 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 right there. 6 centimeters worth, and then another 2 centimeters worth. Oh, I ran out of room. Imagine these are all the same thickness. Um, of something else. So the, the question is, what is what? Well, if we are here in our ride and we are at the top of the loop, it looks like I've got the majority of my potential energy back. And so I'm going to call this one the potential energy. And this one down here is going to be my kinetic energy because we are still moving as we go through this loop the loop, uh, but not nearly as fast. And that's what throws, throws the skaters off that, you know, you are still moving at the top. You're using um, the normal force as the centripetal force. You're also using the force of gravity as centripetal force, but because your directions have changed, that's a very weird feeling all of a sudden to get used to that on the fly. Um, so energy bar chart for point two would say that the majority is back to potential energy. We have some kinetic here and we have energy loss. Now for point three, we are back to all kinetic energy because um, we're back on the ground, but we do have more, even more energy loss after that. So I'm gonna say we have another centimeters worth of energy loss. I had too much room over here. I should have spaced these out easier. Not easier. Better. Um, and if I have three centimeters worth of energy loss and we had 10 centimeters worth to start with, then that leaves me with seven centimeters worth of kinetic energy um, in my bar chart. So 
What I mean by the centimeters worth, these are all just relative heights because I don't know necessarily how much joules we started with. Um, if I said we started with a thousand joules, then right here we would say, oh, this is this is going to be 900 joules and this is going to be 100 joules because we had a 9 to 1 ratio. Um, but energy bar charts are really quite straightforward, but they're a great way to, uh, to visualize what, what's happening with the energy. Unfortunately, you can't have them keep on changing unless you had like a computer simulation or computer graphic. Um, so you pick one spot. You pick spot one, spot two, spot three, and then you do the energy bar chart to those spots. All right, that'll be it for today. Um, go do some homework, practice. See ya.